chair requests the sergeant at arms to direct any standees in the rear of the chamber to the gallery where there is standing room. This is necessary in order to keep these doorways open to facilitate the coming and going of the official parties participating in today's ceremonies. The Senate will come to order. This session will be open with prayer. Prayer will be offered by the chaplain of the Senate, Pastor Arlene Coleman, Bethlehem Baptist Church of McKeesport, Pennsylvania. Please rise. Good morning. Before I lead us in prayer, please allow me to thank you for giving me this awesome opportunity. I am truly grateful to someone who is special to me, our Lieutenant Governor-elect Austin Davis, for extending this invitation to me. I have known him all of his life. He comes from a wonderful family, and he is truly committed and caring. Let us pray. All wise and eternal God, we acknowledge your presence and we submit all control unto you. We know that all things will truly work together for our good if, we, if you are in the midst. We pray for wisdom and understanding to be the foundation of all work that will be done to accomplish moving Pennsylvania forward. We pray for unity because we know that and acknowledge unity brings productivity. As we work together, we are encouraged and we are enlightened. Let each one that moves within the process of government for the people always think about and remember those who voted for them. Let them remember those who are struggling from day to day to make the ends meet. We pray for your blessings, God, upon every person that is in this place and under the sound of my voice. So we do stand today, and we stand acknowledging that you are in this place, and we stand in the name of Jesus. We want to remember all that you have said, but let us also remember what Henry Ford said, that if we take care of the business we're taking care of, success will take care of itself. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Members and guests will remain standing and joining the Pledge of Allegiance. The chair will call on Democratic leader, Senator Costa, to lead us in the pledge. Please be seated. The chair thanks Pastor Coleman, who is the guest today of Lieutenant Governor-elect Davis. The chair also thanks Senator Costa for leading us in the pledge today. The next order of business is communications, communications from the governor. In conformity with law, I have the honor here. These will be referred to the Committee on Rules. The chair lays before the Senate the following annual report from the Office of the Governor, which the clerk will read only in part. Act 36 of 2018. This report will be filed in the library. The chair wishes to announce that the following appointment has been made by the minority leader, Senator Anthony Williams, as a member of the Philadelphia LNG Export Tax Task Force. The next order of business is leaves of absence. The chair recognizes Senator Pittman. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, I request legislative leave for Senators Regan, Dush, and Coleman and personal leave for Senator Mastriano. The chair recognizes Senator Costa. Thank you, Madam President. I request a legislative leave for Senator Anthony Williams. Thank you. Senator Pittman requests legislative leave for Senators Reagan, Dush, and Coleman, and personal leave for Senator Mastriano. Senator Costa requests legislative leave for Senator Anthony Williams. Without objection, those leaves will be granted. Without objection, as a special order of business, the chair recognizes Senator Pittman. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, as a special order of business, I call up Senate Bill 95 on today's calendar and ask for its immediate consideration. Senator Pittman, as a special order of business, calls up Senate Bill 95 on today's calendar and asks for its immediate consideration. Without objection, we will proceed to consider Senate Bill 95 on page one of today's calendar. On Senate Bill 95, Will the Senate agree to the bill? 
The clerk will call the roll. Argel, aye. Almet, aye. Baker, aye. Bartolotta, aye. Boscola, aye. Brewster, aye. Brooks, aye. Brown, aye. Capaletti, aye. Coleman, aye. Collette, aye. Kamita, aye. Costa, aye. Dillon, aye. DeSanto, aye. Dush, aye. Ferry, aye. Flynn, Fontana, aye. Gebhardt, aye. Haywood, aye. Hughes, aye. Hutchinson, aye. Kane, aye. Carney, aye. Langerholtz, aye. Laughlin, aye. Martin, aye. Miller, aye. Muth, aye. Pennycook, aye. Phillips Hill, aye. Pittman, aye. Regan, aye. Robinson, aye. Rothman, aye. Sanicero, aye. Saval, aye. Schwank, aye. Stefano, aye. Street, aye. Tartaglione, aye. Vogel, Aye. Ford Judy. Aye. Williams Anthony H. Aye. Williams Lindsay. Aye. Yaw. Aye. Ward Kim. Aye. Flynn. Aye. The ayes are 48 and the nays are zero. The bill is agreed to. Further, on Senate Bill 95, the chair recognizes Senator Pittman. Madam President, I move Senate Bill 95 be re referred to the Committee on Appropriations. Senator Pittman moves that Senate Bill 95 be re referred to the Committee on Appropriations. On the motion, all those in favor by signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it and the bill is re referred to the Committee on Appropriations. The next order of business is consideration of today's calendar. The first bill on today's calendar is Senate Bill 84. The chair recognizes Senator Pittman. Madam President, I request Senate Bill 84 go over in its order. Senator Pittman requests that Senate Bill 84 go over in its order. Without objection, that bill will go over in its order. The next bill on today's calendar is Senate Bill 126. Will the Senate agree to the bill? Agreed to. Further, on Senate Bill 126, the chair recognizes Senator Pittman. Madam President, I move Senate Bill 126 be re-referred to the Committee on Appropriations. Senator Pittman moves that Senate Bill 126 be re-referred to the Committee on Appropriations. On the motion, all those in favor by signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and the bill is re-referred to the Committee on Appropriation. So this concludes today's calendar. For the intro introduction of some special guests, the chair recognizes the gentleman from Indiana County, Senator Pittman. Thank you, Madam President. It is my distinct pleasure to recognize several uh, former and current elected officials here today. Uh, former Lieutenant Governor Jim Colley is with us. Current Treasurer Stacy Garrity is here as well. Our current Auditor General Tim DeFore is here as well. And I'd also like to welcome Supreme Court Justices Kevin Brobson and Sally Mundy. Further, to recognize some special guests, the chair recognizes the gentleman from Allegheny County, Senator Costa. Thank you very much, Madam President. Madam President, we're joined by a number of guests here this afternoon. And I would say, starting off with our Governor Tom Wolf and First Lady Frances Wolf. Governor, thank you for being with us. United States Senator Bob Casey and his wife, Therese. United States Senator and our former Lieutenant Governor for this chamber in Pennsylvania, John Fetterman and his wife, Giselle. We have members of Congress of the Congressional Delegation as well. 
Congressional Representative Summer Lee, Representative Chris DeLuzio, Representative Matt Cartwright, and Representative Susan Wild. We're also joined today by members of our state Supreme Court, Chief Justice Deborah Todd, Justice Christine Donahue, Justice Kevin Doherty, and Justice David Weck. We're also joined by former Lieutenant Governor Mark Single. And Madam President, we have several members, colleagues of Lieutenant-elect Austin Davis here with us today from the State House, including Speaker Mark Rossi and Democratic Leader Joanna McClinton. We also have a number of municipal officials who joined us here today from Pittsburgh and Allegheny County, specifically uh, Chief County Executive Rich Fitzgerald and Pittsburgh Mayor Ed Ganey. And also I'd like to recognize a number of Governor-elect Shapiro's Cabinet Secretary designees and members of his senior staff who are also joining us here today. We look forward to working with each of you. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. May I ask for a round of applause for all of our distinguished guests. Before proceeding any further, the chair would like to announce that permission has been granted for photographers from each caucus to take photographs during today's session. Also, photographers from the Associated Press and Commonwealth Media Services have been granted permission to take photographs during today's ceremony. Further, the chair would like to ask for the cooperation of the news photographers and others who would like to take pictures or videotape so that during the actual ceremony there will be no picture taking. At the conclusion of the administration of the oath of office, there will be a short pause in the proceedings so that the news photographers and others who so desire will be able to take photographs. The rest of us will be at ease for those few minutes. Your cooperation is appreciated. The chair recognizes Senator Dush has returned from leave. The chair again recognizes Senator Pittman. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, I offer the following resolution and move its immediate adoption. Senator Pittman offers the following resolution, which the clerk will read. Resolve that a committee of six senators be appointed to wait upon the Honorable Austin Davis, Lieutenant Governor-elect, and escort him to the Senate chamber to take oath of office and assume the duties of the office of Lieutenant Governor and President of the Senate. All those in favor will give their consent by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and the resolution is adopted. Pursuant to the resolution just adopted, the chair wishes to announce the following committee to escort Lieutenant Governor-elect Austin Davis and his official party to the Senate chamber. Senator Pittman, Chair. Senator Costa, Senator Hughes, Senator Lindsey Williams, Senator Saval, and Senator Bartolotta. The committee will leave immediately and proceed to the office of the Lieutenant Governor. The Senate will be at ease. The Senate will come to order. The Governor-elect of the Commonwealth the Honorable Joshua D. Shapiro and his wife, the First Lady-to-be, Lori, are entering the Senate chamber. Members and guests will all please rise. The chair recognizes the sergeant at arms. Madam President, I have the honor to present the committee appointed by you to wait upon the lieutenant governor elect. Please bring the committee and guests forward.
Madam President, the Chairman of the Committee, Senator Pittman. Madam President, the Committee appointed to wait upon and escort the Lieutenant Governor-elect and his party to the Senate Chamber has performed its duty. The Lieutenant Governor-elect, Austin Davis, is present and ready to receive the oath of office. The Chair thanks the committee for performing its duty and asks the committee to escort the Lieutenant Governor-elect and his party to their seats. The committee is discharged with the thanks of the Senate. The hour having arrived for the administration of the oath of office to the Lieutenant Governor-elect, the Senate will come to order. The ceremony will be opened with the invocation, which will be offered by Reverend Dr. Alan Waller, in on Tabernacle Baptist Church, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Please rise. Bow our heads. Eternal God, our Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Deborah, Holda, and Mary, God of Malcolm and Metger and Martin, God, we bless you for this day and for this opportunity. I pray, O oh God, for all those who sit in seats of distinction in this august body, and we thank you for the privilege to call your name. While I am mindful of the many African-American men who still wait on justice and opportunity in this great state, I thank you for the privilege of praying a prayer of invocation for the first African-American man to sit in the seat of Lieutenant Governor. For that, God, I'm grateful. Then, God, we pray for all those who will work together for this great state. We pray for these proceedings that even through the celebration, the robust discussion and dialogue that will take place in this room today and in the days to come, we pray for justice, we pray for opportunity, we pray for your will to be done. And we thank you ahead of time, God, for even this day reminds us that we're getting closer to the dream. We're getting closer to what you imagined when you said, let there be. And for that, God, we're grateful. Now, God, have your way. And we'll be ever so mindful to give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. I ask these and all other blessings in the matchless, marvelous, and majestic name that is for me above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. And for his sake we do pray, let us all say, Amen. 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 Members and guests will be seated. The Chair thanks Reverend Waller, who is the guest today of Lieutenant Governor-elect Davis. The Clerk of the Senate will, at this time, Read the certificate of election of the Honorable Austin A. Davis, Lieutenant Governor-elect of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The clerk will proceed. We, the President of the Senate and Speaker of the House of Representatives of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, do certify that the President of the Senate did on the third day of January, A.D., 2023, in the Hall of the House of Representatives at the State Capitol, open the returns of the election for Lieutenant Governor of this Commonwealth. 
and publish the same in the presence of both houses of the General Assembly, conforming to the provisions of the Constitution and laws of said Commonwealth, and upon con counting the votes by a teller appointed on the part of each house, it appeared that the Honorable Austin Davis had the highest number of votes, whereupon the Honorable Austin Davis was duly was declared to have been duly elected Lieutenant Governor of this Commonwealth. In testimony, we have here on two set hands and affixed our seal the day and the year written above. At this time, will Lieutenant Governor-elect Davis please present himself at the rostrum of the Senate for the administration of the oath of office. The oath of office to the Honorable Austin A. Davis will be, be administered by the Honorable Kim Berkeley Clark, President Judge of the Court of Common Pleas of Allegheny County, Pennsylvania. Please rise. Judge Clark. So, I, before I administer the oath, I just want to let everyone know, I know some in this room know what a privilege it is for me to be here today for this historic moment to do this. So for those of you who don't know, it is a privilege. I am so honored and humbled to be here uh, for this historic moment. And Austin, I just have a few words of advice for you as you go forward in your work, because you are a shining example. You are hope for all the little boys and girls in Pennsylvania that look like you. And so be a servant leader, first of all, Remember that you will lead wonderfully. You will lead and do great things if your leadership is based on the foundation of service. Number two, um, just be humble. Every one of us got where we are by the, with the help of others, and never forget that. We never do anything by ourselves. We have Almighty God who guides us and helps us, and we have a whole lot of people, many in this room who helped you, many in this room who helped me get where I am, so be humble. And lastly, but most importantly, just be kind. <laughs> Kindness is just the easiest thing to do, and it is the most effective way to do business. So be a servant leader, be humble, and be kind. God bless you. So would you place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Austin A. Davis, I, Austin A. Davis, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support, obey, and defend, that I will support, obey, and defend, the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and that I will discharge the duties of my office, and that I will discharge the duties of my office, with fidelity, with fidelity. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, congratulations. Be seated. The Senate will now be at ease to allow photographers to take pictures. The Senate will come to order. I now present the gavel of authority of the Senate to the Honorable Austin A. Davis, Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and President of this Senate. Lieutenant Governor Davis, congratulations.
Thank you. Good morning. This is a special day, truly, for me personally and for our great Commonwealth. This day would not have been possible without the unwavering love and support of Pennsylvania's now second lady, my wife, Blair Holmes Davis. Every day, she pushes me to be the best version of myself, day in and day out, whether as an elected official or simply as a man. Growing up, my parents instilled in me the values of hard work, compassion, and empathy, the very values we hope are instilled in all of our leaders. I wouldn't be the man I am today without my parents, Kathy and Anchory Davis. Thank you, and I love you. I would be remiss if I didn't take a moment to acknowledge the historic nature of my swearing in as Pennsylvania's Lieutenant Governor. Today, I became the 35th Lieutenant Governor of Pennsylvania and the first African American to ever hold this office. <laughs> While I'm blessed with this awesome opportunity and responsibility, it was paid for by the blood, sweat, and tears of those who came before me. People like Speaker Kay Leroy Irvis, people like Chief Justice Robert Nix, and countless activists and concerned citizens whose names may not show up in print, but were just as important to our Commonwealth's trajectory. They paved the way for this moment. This moment is a symbol of our progress. Here in the Commonwealth we love, and it's one that I hope serves as a point of pride for millions of Pennsylvanians who have never before seen themselves represented in the halls of power. Today, the son of a union bus driver and a hairdresser, a boy who grew up in a small steel town often overlooked by those in power, a young man driven to his first city council meeting because gun violence came to my neighborhood, has reached the second highest office in this Commonwealth. I am humbled by the chance to carry this history and to serve. More importantly, today we are sending a message to the next generation of leaders, young people across our Commonwealth, especially black and brown young people, that Pennsylvania has and will always be a place where all are welcomed and where everyone has the opportunity to succeed. I say to all the young people watching right now who are worried and unsure about their future that the American dream is alive and well here in Pennsylvania. That no matter how you grew up, no matter where you come from or what you look like, this Commonwealth will always be a place where you can create your own destiny. But my experiences and the history we are making today are not ends of themselves but rather the value resides in the promise that every single Pennsylvania who feels unseen, unheard, or forgotten will have a voice for their concerns and aspirations, a say in Pennsylvania's future, and that in the Shapiro-Davis administration, they have leaders who are fighting for them. Over the past year, I've traveled across this Commonwealth. And I've had the opportunity to meet Pennsylvanians from all walks of life, whether it be at a fair in Huntingdon, a church in Erie, a VFW in Williamsport, or a barbershop in Philadelphia. I can tell you that the things that unite us are so much greater than the things that divide us. Pennsylvanians across class, color, and creed want good schools for their children, the opportunity to join the middle class and live the American dream, they want to keep their families and communities safe, and they want real freedom. At a time when our politics has become mean and divisive and simply out of touch for the needs of those it's meant to serve, I have come away with a singular message from the conversations I've had. Pennsylvanians want leaders who will put delivering real results for them and their families above all else. 
Because of this, I say to my colleagues in the Senate and in the House that we must no longer measure our success through the counting of insignificant political points or transient headlines. Our success must be measured by the results we deliver for Pennsylvanians and their families. The only victories that matter are those achieved on behalf of the people we serve. In the weeks and months leading up to this moment, I've thought a lot about my grandparents, Guy and Sadie Simmons and Vernon and Josephine Davis. One grandfather was a steel worker, the other was a railroad foreman for B&O Railroad, Railroad. All of them came to Pennsylvania from the South to create a better life for our family. When they made their journey, they sought refuge from the suffocation of Jim Crow and the sting of segregation. I don't think in my grandparents' wildest dreams they would have ever imagined that their grandson would one day be sworn into the second highest office in this Commonwealth. But while they may not have been able to envision this particular future, they fought to make sure that their children and their grandchildren had the opportunity to chart their own paths, that they had the right to vote, and that when they walked into a room, they wouldn't just be listened, but they'd listen to, but they'd be respected. And their sacrifice and hard work was not in vain. It is, in fact, embodied in this very moment. It is their sacrifice and the sacrifice of countless others that allow me to stand here today as the first African American to ever hold this office. This moment is truly historic. But while what is happening today may be unique, the story of generation upon generation working to build a brighter future for those who succeed them is not. That story is one you can find all across this Commonwealth. Hardworking families across Pennsylvania fighting to give themselves and their children a brighter future. Their struggle, their hopes and aspirations are what fuels me, what drives me, and continues to me to do this work. I often have said that the people closest to the pain should be closest to the power. That's why today I have a message for every parent working the night shift to give their child a fair shot, every small town kid looking for a path to make a better life for themselves, or anyone who feels unseen or forgotten across our Commonwealth. I say to you that you are not alone, that I hear you and understand your concerns because I've lived them. And as your Lieutenant Governor, I will be your champion. I will work tirelessly to ensure that every child and family in this Commonwealth has ladders of opportunities to succeed so that every generation that comes after can be, be, be better off than the one that came before them. I could not be more honored to take on this fight with anyone else but our next governor, Josh Shapiro. <laughs> Josh has become more than just a running mate, but a friend and a partner. I've seen the care in his eyes when talking to Pennsylvanians throughout our Commonwealth, and I've bore witness to the determination and the grit he has to take on the biggest fights. Josh is a fighter, someone who has never backed down in the face of adversity, and I'm proud to stand alongside him to make progress on the things that actually matter. Josh and I embarked on this journey over a year ago to make Pennsylvania a more fairer, more just and more prosperous place. Today is another big step in that journey. Here is one more promise that I'm going to give you on behalf of Josh and I and everyone watching at home. We won't let you down as your next governor and lieutenant governor. Now, let's work. I now call upon the President Pro Tempore, Senator Kim Ward, to preside. Here comes magic. 
<laughs> Catherine Baker Knoll is my hero because of this. To conclude the ceremony, the chair would call upon Reverend Robert C. Holmes, Christian Life Ministries of Manesson, Pennsylvania, for the benediction. Please rise. Shall we call on the Most High God, Jehovah Jireh, our provider? Let us pray. Father, as we look in thy holy scriptures and we see your holy convocations, we see, Lord, your holy meeting times, meeting times known as Passover and Pentecost and Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Father, three times a year you instructed Israel and all the men were instructed to meet with you. Oh God, we thank you for meeting with us today because this is the day that you have made. And only you, Father, could have called and assembled in this place these great men of faith, such as our governor-elect Josh Shapiro. Only you, Father, could have called and assembled in this place our now Lieutenant Governor Austin Davis. Father, as you instructed Joshua through your word, Lord, instruct them that they together will have great success. And, and we know, uh, oh, Jehovah, if you be for them, nothing can stand against them. Lord, we believe this great day is no mistake, but is it an indeed divine purpose and that we are here witnessing great history in the making. The people of this blessed commonwealth have spoken in a spirit of unity. And we together have elected for the very first time an African American as our Lieutenant Governor. We pray, Father, that our Lieutenant Governor will continue to meet with you, Lord, and pray as Solomon did, asking for wisdom and, and great knowledge to lead beside our Governor this great state called Pennsylvania. Father, I pray for a double portion of your spirit to fall fresh and daily upon our Lieutenant Governor, Austin Davis. Bless his help me, his wife, Blair Holmes Davis. May your anointing cover their marriage to continue as one. Lord, we pray and believe that our Lieutenant Governor will help us to protect uh, this great democracy that is no longer taken for granted as many have in the past as we now can clearly see the opportunity of thy marvelous theocracy. This day certainly reminds all of us of the song, How Great Is Our God. And we know that all the powers that be are ordained of thee, Lord, have thine own way. Please give our Lieutenant Governor great boldness and humility through your Holy Spirit as he presides over the Senate encouraging them to represent all the people, for this is a great land that you have given, representing the birthplace of a nation. Let then this commonwealth be a shining beacon of hope, leading every state to forget about the past, looking to a new beginning. And as the new beginning begins, let us all press together in great unity towards that mark of the high calling of God in Yeshua. Lord, we are so thankful for the anointed prayers that have already been offered in this place. As we prepare to conclude this portion of this efficacious celebration called inauguration, we look back to Numbers, the sixth chapter. We see you, Lord, speaking to thy people through the priests, saying to the people, as we say to our governor, and we say to our lieutenant governor, and we say to our first lady and our second first lady, to everyone present and throughout this commonwealth, we say to you all, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance unto thee and give thee peace. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever, let us say amen. amen. The chair thanks Reverend Holmes, who is a guest today of Lieutenant Governor Davis. 
The Senate will be at ease while the Lieutenant Governor and his party leave the chamber. All senators and visitors, please remain seated. I now call upon the escort committee to come forward and escort the official party to the rear of the Senate chamber. The chair will now ask that all guests remain seated while the members of the Senate prepare to depart the chamber and move to the inaugural ceremonies for the governor. The chair recognizes Senator Pittman for a recess motion. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, I move that the Senate do now recess until Wednesday, January 18th, 2023 at 11 a.m., unless sooner recalled by the President pro tempore. It has been moved by Senator Pittman that the Senate do now recess until Wednesday, January 18th, 2023 at 11 o'clock a.m., unless sooner recalled by the President pro tempore. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. The motion is carried, and the Senate now stands in recess till Wednesday, January 18th, 2023, at 11 a.m., unless sooner recalled by the President pro tempore. Would all members of the Senate please take your tickets, which have been placed in an envelope on your desks. Get your coats and form a line in the center aisle behind the Sergeant at Arms and the Senate Mace. Leadership should line up first behind the Mace, followed next by all members.